Greetings friends, it's me, Wayman, and I come on to do another video. This is Views of the Underworld in Ancient Greece. Um, this is video 4.2. So I had to label them this way so everything would not be as confusing as it could be. Um, in my last video, I discussed the five rivers uh, in of the underworld. This video, I knew I said I was going to start talking about Tartarus, but I realized Erebus, or darkness, was very important for the reasons I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you. Now, what we're familiar with is the Hebrew cosmology described to us in a Christian way, mostly, because we, we hear it all the time. And a lot of times, uh, skeptics and apologists will go at it, trying to explain different things, but here I'm going to make a comparison using Erebus and the idea of the Hebrew and ancient Near Eastern view of darkness and cosmology so we can kind of put together uh, what the argument is and maybe better understand how to view the thinking on it from the ancient point of view. So, uh, a lot of times this isn't a video to be a rib jab or anything, but to me, the defin simply the definition of an apologist is an apologist is nothing more than an evangelist uh, disguised as a historian or scientist. Okay? A lot of the times when they try to turn mythology and theology into science, it ends up being junk. Junk science. So, that's why they fight. But, but here, if we kind of understand the thinking of ancient Near Eastern thought out of the Hebrew belief system and the theology and cosmology, and compare that to the Greek view of it, uh, we can see some similarities in how they thought about it. And one example is the idea of Erebus, darkness, koshek, which is the Hebrew word for darkness, how is that used in many different ways, like Erebus is used interchangeably with Hades? Uh, it's very interesting. So we're going to get into that. And what we're going to do is we're going to read the creation stories, uh, the first out of the Greek, out of the Hesiod. And then we're going to look at the Hebrew uh, view of it, and then because we're more familiar with that, and then try to make the comparisons on uh, the topic. So first what we're going to do, if you can ever get a get a chance to get the book, Hesiod's Theogony. Uh, by all means, it's, it's awesome. And it's it's right to the literature, straight up, and, and you can view it. It's not commentary on it, whatever. It's it's the work of literature. And Hesiod is believed to, to have wrote, wrote uh, Theogony in the beginning of the gods in, in, in the world, and it's excellent. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to that. We're going to go to the Evelyn White translation. I, I have my translation somewhere on my bookshelf. I may have loaned it out. I can't find it. Uh, Evelyn White has a good one found online, and so we'll use that one. All right, so we're going to start reading on page uh, line 155 out of Hesiod's Theogony. And uh, verily at first chaos air came to be, but next wise bosom, bosom Gaia, earth, and dim Tartarus, hell, in the depth of the wide path earth, Eros, love, fairest among the deathless gods, who unnerves the limbs, and overcomes the mind, in wise counsels of all gods and men within them. And chaos, air, came from Erebus, darkness, and black Nyx, night, but from Nyx, night, was born ether, light, and Irma, day, whom she conceived and bore from union in love with Erebus. And Gaia, Earth, first bore star Ornos, heaven, equal to herself, to cover her on every side. So so it's pretty interesting. So so here you have Erebus, darkness, coming forth from air, and black Nyx, but of Nyx, night, was born ether, light, and Irma, day. No mention of a sun or a moon. So when uh, skeptics and apologists go at it, arguing, well, how could there be a 
How could there be light and there's not a moon? They just didn't think about it that way. That's not how the cosmology was set up. And so the apologists would give the cheesy answer, well, it was kind of like a dim and morning and the word means this. It probably does, but the cosmology wasn't set up that way. The sun and moon were not created yet in the cosmology and in the theology of, of these uh, uh, um, early deities and the uh, uh, primeval gods, the earliest forms, it just wasn't set up that way. And and so, also, uh, what, I, what I found pretty interesting in just reading this, that uh, the matriarchal gives birth to the patriarchal, and later the patriarchal tries to uh, take that over. It's very interesting. Interesting uh, the cosmic wars going on constantly, all the time. So, so let's go to... Uh, the Hebrew word and, and the Hebrew view of it. And I'm going to try to use, just like I read Hesiod, uh, the Greek names which are massacred, uh, on what it is. I'm going to try to throw in the Hebrew words for the uh, English words so you can kind of get an kind of read, read maybe like Hesiod, right? So, so here we are. I'm using the New Publication Society uh, um, Tanakh, and i uh, just using the, the Greek translation of it uh, for the names. Uh, when Elohim began to create the, the Shemaim and the Eretz, the earth and the heaven, the earth, the Eretz, being unformed and void, Tohu Vavohu, Vakoshek, Alpine Tehom, Unformed and void, with darkness, koshek, over the face of the deep. And a wind, the ruach of God, sweeping over the water. Elohim, Maranatha, Alpine, Hamayim, the Mayim. Elohim said, Fayamar Elohim. Yahi or Vahi or. Elohim said, Let there be light, and there was light. Or. Vayar Elohim et Haor Kitov. Elohim saw that light was good. Vayabdal Elohim ben Haor Uvin Hakoshak. And Elohim separated the or. From the Koshak. Vakara Elohim Laor Yom Vala Koshak. Kara Leila Vahie Erev Vahi Bokor Yom Echad. And God called light day or Yom. And the darkness, Koshak, he called night, Layla, and there was an evening and a morning, a first day, Erev and Bokor, Yom Echad. So, so that kind of, uh, and it goes on, Vayamar Elohim et Harika Vayavdel Bain Hamayim. And God made an expanse, the expanse, the rakia, and it separated the water, the Hamayim, the water, which was below the expanse, from the water which was the above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. So here you have the divisions. You have day and night being separated, defined, given names. The waters separated, defined, given names. Light and day, morning and night, darkness and light, without a sun or a moon. It's just the cosmology of it. So it's pretty interesting uh, when you look at it. So, so the darkness... 
the Koshek in Hebrew is, is also used um, to explain destruction and death and all kinds of things uh, apart from darkness also. Very descriptive. Same thing for Erebus in Greek literature. So when they're talking about his eyes went dark, uh, went black, he went to the dark gloom of the underworld. That's why Hades and Erebus is used interchangeably and, and death. So it's, it's quite interesting. So, so hopefully that was a little bit informative. Sorry I massacred the Greek. Sorry I massacred the Hebrew on that. But hopefully it, it gives you a little bit of glimpse into uh, some of the controversy that happens in the view of the cosmos and how it was formed in the eyes of the ancients and as far as what they believed the cosmology was and the theology was. So take care, friends. And remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.